What's going on my beautiful governors? Welcome to a special Rise of Kingdoms video. Well, I mean, it's going to be a special series of videos because today's video is should you main archers in 2024? But after this one, I will also publish the same concept for other troop types. Should you main infantry in 2024? And also we'll do the same video for cavalry. And in each video, we are going to have a special guest who is focusing on that troop type and has a lot of experience with the commanders from that troop type. Today's guest is Archer Syndicate. He does also have a YouTube channel. Link will be in the description. So if you're into archers, definitely go ahead and check his channel out. Without further ado, let's go. Spartans! What is your profession? Archer Syndicate, welcome to Spartan Gaming. It's a pleasure to have you here. I mean, it wouldn't be wrong to assume that you are an archer main from your from your nickname, right? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, Only archers. Yeah, all right, perfect, nice. And today's video, the title is going to be Should You Main Archers in 2024? But before I ask you that ultimate question, I want to ask you this. Why archers? Why you decided to go for archers? Well, honestly, the reason I went for archers really came down to my KVK1 experience. I ended up maxing YSG, like going for the expertise. And then at that point, I was like, I'm in on archers. I made my first archer march and I hit Season of Conquest. It was Boudicca Prime. I had a full legendary archer set. And I found I really enjoyed their play style where it's really, really high risk, but you get a good reward. So if you're able to play archers well, you're going to trade very well, but if not, you're going to trade pretty poorly. And I found that more passive playstyle did really work for me and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I like the big damage of YSG as well. So really everything about the troop kind of just fit what I really liked about playing Rise of Kingdoms. I see. It, does it bother you that Archers doesn't actually attack from range in Rise of Kingdoms? Because when I first started it, I was like, wait, what? Archers, you cannot attack from range? I mean, it's weird, sure, but after playing Call of Dragons and seeing how the range combat works there, I'm kind of happy they don't attack from a range. Oh, I feel I like it wouldn't be as fun. Like, it's just not a playstyle I personally would enjoy. Uh -huh. Maybe it'd be interesting, but I just don't think it'd fit like with the actual game in the meta. All right, perfect. What if I ask you, at this moment, who are your top two archer commanders? Currently, the top two like in my whole arsenal would be Zhu Lang and Herman, and I think that's just for everybody. They're too overpowered. I mean, yeah. Zhu Lang's got a YSG AOE, he's got extra skill damage. Herman's got like the best debuff in the game. They're like up there with the two best commanders, I reckon. So they're probably the two best archers in my opinion. So you said Zhu Liang and Herman. My question is, this is one of the actually main questions or problems if someone wants to main archers, in my opinion at least, and I would like to hear your side of the story. But when I take a look at archer commanders, I see, you know, r really good ones. Like you said, Herman, Zugele Young, Boudica, even like I think Henry is really good. Uh, but my question is, let's say a new player, they want to main archers. How they're going to pass through the period from uh, first KVK or the first time that you started your account until Season of Conquest? Uh, I mean, there's definitely problems when you get into that. KVK1, you've really only got one option. It's YSG. And the thing is, if you get YSG, you have to make a sacrifice of Zul Lang when you hit Season of Conquest because mm -hmm. you have to get Herman and run Herman YSG. At that mm -hmm. point, you're missing out on Zul Lang, obviously. The other option is you run like a Herman with a Kusunoki in like KVK1 and 2, but it really sucks. Like, I mean, it's going to be a pretty bad march by the time you hit KVK2, and that's just the biggest problem. I don't know a way around that. Mm -hmm. You can consider investing in YSG for like a short-term investment, but mm -hmm. if you want to get long-term value, be able to play against the meta, Zhu Lang and Herman together are probably the best first march you can make, and it's super powerful to the point where you probably want to skip YSG. So those first two seasons are going to be pretty not very fun. Like, to be honest, they're just not going to be too fun. And the mm -hmm. only thing that can really help you in that would be getting good equipment, like focusing on like all your gems into Dragon Breath gear. That'd be the only way mm -hmm. to kind of make that march usable and somewhat get like a couple of kills in a KVK. Uh, what about like if you, let's say you get lucky and maybe you invest a few, like five or 10 sculptures to Tutmos. How about Tutmos and YSG? You think it's viable? Uh, Thumos YSG is certainly a viable march. It's probably the strongest march for archers in KVK1, one of the strongest in KVK2. Uh -huh. But the problem is Thutmose's end endgame potential, it's pretty good with his relic. It's just not up there. It's probably a little bit worse than YSG. Yeah. So as a lower spender, you can consider Thutmose once again for short-term value. Uh -huh. But unless you're really going to take him far, like near his expertise, he's not going to be the best investment, especially for the end game. Unless you get his double relic, he can be okay, mm -hmm. but he's definitely not up there with those top commanders, especially since he's in the gold keys as well. Mm -hmm. So he could be easy to access from that. But the thing is, 
is either going to be a lower skill level or you have to invest gold heads and it's going to be a low investment potential. That's probably his biggest issue. Yeah, I see. In the end, uh, the the process of going from the, the first account creation to Season of Conquest is going to be a little bit painful for Archer mains, right? Pretty much, yeah. It's going to be the hardest point. Yeah, I see. I see. But I think when you get into Season of Conquest, then you are rewarded because uh, there are a bunch of good commanders. And speaking of good commanders, you already said that your favorite one is Azul Gelyang with Herman Prime. What if you go up to two marches? Uh, what would be your commander configuration for two marches? Uh, moving into two marches, I think I said in one of my videos, you stick with the Zuge Leong with Herman Prime, and then you mm -hmm. run like a Boudicca with an Artemisia. If you invested with YSG, you can go Boudicca YSG. Mm -hmm. Another option is doing Herman Prime with a Sherbani Pile. That's actually a really solid march. Hmm. Not very good in duels, but it's good in the open field for the AoE. Yeah. And then you run Boudicca Zuge Leong. Like, you just want to get those meta commanders, really. Artemisia is the only like real backwards investment out of all of those. And if you have YSG, obviously he's still usable. And now let's say we go up to three archer marches, uh, then what would be your configuration? Moving into three archer marches, you're probably still going to stick with a Herman. At this point, you definitely want a Sherbani pal. Uh -huh. You would run a Boudicca with an Artemisia or your Zuge Leong, depending. And then you'd run your Henry with YSG or Zuge Leong, depending if you got Artemisia or not. So uh -huh. the best three marches, probably Boudicca, Artemisia, uh, Zulang, Henry, and then Herman, a Sherbani pal, in my opinion. I see. So even with three marches, I guess uh, your first option is not YSG, huh? It's not my first option, but he's definitely usable. I mean, like uh -huh. in my Murderable, I'm personally running him with my Henry because he's still a very solid commander. Uh -huh. But there are just better options than him, especially if you haven't invested in him already. <clears throat> Other than the latest and the greatest commanders, the only investment that you are suggesting is Artemisia. Like, not Nebu, not Cyrus, Ramses, Gilga, whatever, but it is Artemisia, right? I mean, yeah, as someone who has Cyrus Max, he's strong. Gilgamesh has fallen out of the meta. Nebu's mm -hmm. okay for four marches, mm -hmm. but Artemisia's synergy with Boudicca Prime is just too good to really skip out on. And the fact yeah. she's available in the daily special offer as well, mm -hmm. it does make her quite an enticing commander to grab. And she doesn't need a high investment. 5511 is field usable. Yeah. And then you can work on leveling her up from there. Perfect. Now, yeah, before I ask you the, the final ultimate question, I would like to go through the, the equipment, archer equipment. So when you take a look at the best end game sets for archers, infantry and cavalry, let's say, uh, how, how would you rate uh, archer gear? The end, like yeah, full legendary, like everything maxed. Um, I mean, when we look at archer gear, I think it's up to standard with the other troop types. In my opinion, I think infantry has the worst set. Mm -hmm. Cavs probably have the best set and then archers like in between. So. Yeah. The Dragon Breath set is solid. You can upgrade it with the KVK weapon and two leadership pieces, getting the leadership legs and boots. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a very good set. But it's definitely not as strong as like the crazy amount of health you can get, you can get on a Cav set. And infantry, obviously, their sets are pretty average. So archers, in my opinion, have a solid set of gear. It's not bad by any means. They do shine, though, in the epic sets. So if you do need an epic set of gear, archers probably have the best yeah. set there with an actual set bonus. So yeah, that's where right. their gear stands out. Yeah, that's where their gear stands out a lot more compared to the legendary sets, which are good, but they're not obviously the top, top tier. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree. Like When it comes to uh, low investment equipment, archer definitely best with revival set. Uh, but for end game, I definitely agree. Cavalry has the best one. Just one thing that caught to my attention is that for leadership pieces, you said legs and boots, correct? Yeah. I was thinking about when I take a look at the leadership gear, I was thinking about legs and glows actually, because Dragon Breath set already gives you defense and the uh, the glows from, from Dragon Breath, it gives you archer attack. So why do you choose legs and boots rather than legs and glows? Uh, the reason I chose the boots over the gloves is because archers, when you look at their commanders, most of the recent commanders have not much health. I mean, Zulang has some health, but Henry, Herman, and mm -hmm. also Boudicca don't really have any health available. So giving yeah. archers as much health as you can really benefits them. And obviously we know health is usually the lowest stat for almost every troop. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to cut off defense in that march and get more health. But swapping out gloves for the leadership, the Dragon Breath gloves for the leadership gloves is certainly still a viable option. I wouldn't say that's bad at all. In mm -hmm. my opinion, though, I'd say the boots are a slightly better investment uh, and would be slightly more beneficial to like an archer march in general. I see. Thank you. Okay, great. And would you agree that Archer has the best civilization? Ottoman, I think, hands down the best fighting civilization in the game. Well, Ottoman Empire, yeah, that's just the best civilization in general. And then Archer units get a special unit with that and 5% health. You really can't go wrong. So Archers easily by far and away compared to every other troop have the best civilization. It's like not even close. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
one more question about archers and it's about the city skins that you can get from kvk do you prefer uh top copy palace or do you prefer the Twilight Falls, which gives you 5% skill damage? When I look at Togepi Palace, I mean, it's an okay city skin, but realistically, you're getting 7% of stats because you're losing troop attack, which includes archer troops. Yeah, unfortunately. And I'd rather yeah. fight, yeah. I'd rather 5% health over the 7% defense, really. And with the Twilight Falls, skill damage is good, but I find archers have a lot of skill damage. So even then, health might be better. Uh -huh. So I wouldn't really spend the KVK coins on that. There's better spots, like in materials, gold heads, mm -hmm. obviously blueprints. But it is an upgrade, I'd say, slightly over an epic health skin. It is not an upgrade over a Zenith skin, though. I think an Archer Zenith health skin would definitely be better than a skill damage skin. And now, then, let me ask you the ultimate question. If, let's say... You were playing Rise of Kingdoms from scratch today in 2024. Would you main archers again? Would I main archers right now again? Personally, yes, I've enjoyed them so much. But should someone coming into the game become like a full archer main like I've done? Mm -hmm. Probably not. I mean, when you look at other troop types, obviously archers have strong commanders. But you can't say someone like Boudicca Prime is stronger than someone like a Lao Che. Like Lao Che is a new commander, crazy stats, new mechanics. You really just can't beat it. So being an only one troop main isn't the best option. Should you mm -hmm. consider using like extra archer marches or focusing in on them? I think that's more related to your play style. Do you want to be very aggressive? They're probably not the best troop for you. Do you mm -hmm. like to play it a little bit slower on the open field with a very high risk, but a chance to get great trades? I'd say archers are a really good option for that. And if you're willing to stake it out through the early game and deal with all like the really rubbish marches like Herman and Kusunoki mm -hmm. and make it to the end game, it's going to feel rewarding. But I think running other troop types is still necessary, especially in the current meta with crazy cav marchers and infantry. At least one of each troop type would be a good murder ball in my opinion. And archers are obviously good, but they're not so much better where I would say you should only run them on the open field. I see. So basically it depends on your preference and you're saying that it is not the most optimal uh, going for full archers for your average player. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it is a game, like you said, if you really enjoy playing archers like I do, go for it. Go fully main them. I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But obviously, for pure optimization, best account value, you want to run at least one of each troop type. You can consider running more than one archer march as well, but mm -hmm. I'd make sure you have a cav and an infantry march in that murder ball. I see. So before we finish the video, best advice or number one advice for people who wants to focus on archers uh, for when it comes to field fighting. My best advice for yeah. field fighting with archers is just be as patient as possible. No mm -hmm. need to get too aggressive because the second you get hit by someone, it's instantly a bad trade pretty much every time. So yeah. when you're field fighting, just make sure you're really like learning how to micro your marches, moving it so that you can use your active skills in a good position rather than swinging around in the enemy murder ball. This stuff does come with time, you'll notice. When you get better at using active skills and rage chaining on the open field, you can easily throw your active skill off and get away pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But if you do mess up, you're going to pretty much get sad faced instantly. So you want to be able to control your marches really well. Be very passive almost. Don't get too aggressive. Don't chase marches down yeah. and just stick yeah. with the big murder ball group. Otherwise, you're going to get a pretty bad trade usually with archer commanders and archers just in general. And uh, one more thing, I, for I completely forget it on the equipment section, but... Would you just put Ring of Doom and Horn of Fury on pretty much all your archer marches? Or do you have a different equipment, I mean, accessory choices? For all your archer marches, I'd say Ring of Doom and Horn of Fury are very solid. If you're making like two, three marches, I'd recommend getting like a dagger in there or even a Mora's Web at some point just for uh -huh. the debuffs. Uh -huh. But other than that, Ring, and Doom, Ring of Doom and Horn of Fury are easily like the two best accessories. There's pretty much no doubt in my mind about that. Uh -huh. I guess you also put your Mora's Web and let's say if you go for Mora's Web and Dagger, you would put it on something like Artemisia March, right? Uh, probably if it's a bit of a tankier March, that's definitely a good thing, or a faster March as well. Like, mm -hmm. let's say if you had a Herman with a Nebu for whatever reason, a March mm -hmm. that might be slightly fast, mm -hmm. giving it a horn, or giving it, sorry, a dagger or also a Mora's Web would be really good because you can easily hit the target first, get the debuffs rolling, mm -hmm. and then your other Marches will get their active skills going as well. So I find the faster March the better, or mm -hmm. a tankier March will also do a little bit better as well because you can almost be a little bit more aggressive with that March and stay in combat a little bit longer with it. Okay, Archer Syndicate, thank you so much for joining for this uh, Pure Archer video. Guys, his channel link will be in the description. Make sure to check him out and drop him a sub and like. Thank you so much for joining again. I'll see you guys on the next video. Goodbye. See ya.